Cadets, welcome to your training. I'm here to teach you everything you need to know. Our civilization is dying. To restart our own sun, we will need to capture and beam home a massive amount of energy from our neighbor sun, which is about to go supernova. Your four ships will always be traveling inward, pulled by gravity toward the star. Meanwhile, the star will release energy bursts, which will travel in the opposite direction, spiraling away from the star. It is your job to avoid these bursts when they would destroy you, and to intercept them when you can. You will store this energy and use some of it strategically to superpower your ships, but ultimately, how well you do is determined by how many of the yellow and red bursts you can send home in the end. Give each player a player board and the miniature ships that match the color indicated on the board. Also give each player two clear cubes to place in the energy supply box on their board. Select a player to be the first player and give them the yellow first player token. Moving clockwise around the table, each player places one ship on the game board, beginning on the outermost space, until all ships have been placed. Position the star board near the game board. With all cards face down, shuffle them, divide them into three decks according to the color of their backs, and then draw the correct number from each deck, depending on the number of players, according to the chart on the starboard. Place the red cards down first, then the yellow ones on top of them, and finally the white ones on top. The rest of the cards are not used and can be placed back in the box. Turn over the top two cards and place them on the next and current slots on the starboard. On your turn, you begin by declaring a power profile. Because all four of your ships must share the same energy budget and there isn't enough for them all, you'll have to decide how many ships to power. If you power three, each receives three boost points, or BP. If you power two, each receives four BP. Powering a single ship nets at six BP. If you choose to let all of your ships drift, you receive one clear cube of energy to be used in the future. You have to declare your power profile before you move any ships and cannot change it once you've begun to move your first ship. Now, move your ships one at a time, beginning with the one closest to the center and then moving outward. Each ship will always move the number of spaces indicated by this round's gravity number, shown at the top of the current star card. For each ship, you have to choose if you are powering it or not. If not, simply move it forward the number of spaces indicated by gravity. If this will be one of your powered ships, you will still have to move it forward via gravity, but can also spend your boost points on additional movement. Every space you move forward or backward costs one BP. Anytime you perform an orbit boost, which is a move to a space that is adjacent but in a different orbit, costs four BP. That's why the two ship power profile is so useful. It gives each ship enough BP to orbit boost. In addition to the free BP you receive per ship from your power profile, you can also gain bonus BP by spending energy cubes from your energy supply. A clear cube nets you three extra BP. A yellow cube gives you four. These bonus BP can be split between any of your powered ships on this turn. You can also gain bonus BP by landing on a clear cube, but we'll cover that in a minute. When powering these ships, you can choose to move it via gravity first and then use your BP for further movement, or to use your BPs first and finish with gravity. The most important thing is that you can't split these up by moving some BP, then gravity, then use more BP, etc. First one, then the other. When moving, you can move over other ships and cubes without any penalty but landing on an object causes something to happen. Landing means that your ship has completed its movement, BPs and gravity, and ended up on the same space as something else. If you land on another ship, you can choose to slide forward to the next empty space or to slide backward to the next empty space. However, you can't slide through two or more ships in a row. That's a blockade. If you have no other option but to slide through a blockade, your ship is destroyed. If you land on a cube, the effect will depend on the type of cube. If you land on a clear cube, slide either forward or backward to the next empty space, just as if you had landed on a ship. You now receive a bonus of four BPs that you can spend on one or more powered ships on this turn, if there are any left. You can't spend them on the ship that just landed on the clear cube because remember, that ship has already completed its movement for this turn. Sometimes, these bonus BPs can't be used because you have no further powered ships on this turn. That's okay! 
It's normal. Bonus VPs can't be banked for future turns. If you land on a yellow cube, you collect it, but it destroys your ship. Probably the only time you'd want to do this is at the end of the game. If you land on a red cube, you collect it if you have a second ship that is orbit adjacent to the red cube. If you don't, your ship is destroyed. Don't worry, these cube interactions are all listed on your player board to reference at any time. Also, if you land on or in the star, your ship is definitely destroyed. This will happen from gravity alone, so you'll have to make sure to orbit boost ships to keep them from burning up. That's orbital mechanics. There are three special formations in this game that give you extra abilities. The first is the blockade. This is where two or more ships are in a line. As we've already covered, your opponents cannot slide through a blockade without being destroyed. So this is an effective way to hamper their movement and put them in danger. Ships in blockade formation can also fire laser blasts, which we'll cover in a moment. While normally ships can move over other ships, you can't orb boost over or through a blockade. You also can't laser blast a ship in a blockade. The second type of formation is the shield. This consists of two or more ships orbit adjacent to each other. Shields protect from laser blasts, orbit bumps, and from clear cubes, all of which we'll cover in a moment. The third type of formation is collector fulcrum. This is three or more ships orbit adjacent to each other, where each ship is in a different orbit. Not only does this act as a shield formation, but it also allows you to collect clear cubes that land on or would move through any ships in the formation. After all your ships have moved, from the one closest to the sun to the one farthest away, you can perform any special action by sending cubes from your energy supply. The first is laser blast. The lead ship in a blockade can fire a laser blast. That pushes any ship directly in front of it forward to the next empty space. The reason it's so powerful is that you can push a ship into something that destroys it, like a blockade or the star. You can't laser blast a ship in a special formation though. The second special action is the orbit bump. This allows one of your ships to push an object, either a ship or a cube, that is orbit adjacent to your object, one orbit further out. For example, this ship could orbit bump this cube onto the other green ship, making sure that this green ship would collect the cube. In addition to that, this green ship could orbit bump this other ship, so that now this green ship could orbit boost into this next layer. There are a couple of limitations. You can't cause the immediate destruction of the ship via an orbit bump by bumping it into the star or a deadly cube or a deadly cube into it. You can't orbit bump an opponent ship that is in a shield formation. You also can't orbit bump an object into a space that would require two incompatible objects to occupy the same space. So there are no slides after an orbit bump. So you can't bump a ship into a cube. And if you bump a cube into a ship, the ship must be able to collect that cube. When bumping a cube, any effect it has are the same as if the cube were moving during the star action. To orbit bump something in the innermost orbit, you can do so from a linearly adjacent space, bumping it to any space orbit adjacent from it. The third special action you can perform at the end of your turn is Ship Revive. This allows you to recover one of your destroyed ships, place it in the outermost space, or if it is occupied, the first empty space after that. After all players have taken their turn, the round ends with a star action, determined by the current star card. First, move all the cubes on the board. They each move the number of spaces indicated by the big black number on the card. Start with the cube farthest from the star and work your way inward, moving each cube that number of spaces. Next, bring out the first new cube that is depicted on the card, the same number of spaces indicated by the big black number. Then, add any further new cubes depicted. Each comes out to the smaller number printed below it. As you move cubes, resolve any interactions with ships as follows. Clear cubes. If a clear cube moves through or lands on a ship in a collector fulcrum, that player captures the cube and adds it to their energy supply. If a clear cube lands on a ship that is in a shield formation, but not in a full collector fulcrum, it slides forward to the next empty space. If a clear cube lands on a ship not in a shield formation, 
the player has the option to temporarily shield the ship by spending one yellow cube from their energy supply. The clear cube can then slide forward normally. If the player doesn't wish to spend their energy or can't, the ship is destroyed. Yellow cubes. Whenever a yellow cube moves through or lands on a ship, that player collects it. Red cubes. Whenever a red cube moves through or lands on a ship, the ship is destroyed. Remember that all cube ship interactions are shown on your player board for easy reference. Once you have resolved all cube movements depicted on the current star card, take the card in the next slot and move it over to the top of the current slot. Draw a new card and reveal it for the next slot. Pass the first player disc to the left. It is now time to begin the next round. As you play a game, you'll progress from white cards to yellow cards to red cards. You'll see more yellow and red cubes as the game progresses, and somewhat fewer clear ones. But every game is completely different, depending on the cards in play and the order in which they appear. One thing that is constant by the time you get to the red cards, you'll see the greatest opportunities and also the greatest dangers. Once you resolve the star actions for the final card, the star goes supernova and a giant explosion and the game is over. Yellow and red cubes from your energy supply are beamed home as victory points. Yellow cubes are worth one point each, while red cubes are worth three points. Whoever has the most victory points wins. Clear cubes aren't worth anything at the end, so make sure you spend them on some memorable maneuvers before the fiery end. Your civilization is counting on you. Make us proud.